Well then, emptiness means essentially transience. That's the first thing it means. Nothing to grasp, nothing permanent, nothing to hold on to. But it means this with special reference to ideas of reality, ideas of God, ideas of the self, the Brahman, anything you like. What it means is that reality escapes all concepts. If you say there is a God, that's a concept. If you say there is no God, that's a concept. And Nagarjuna is saying that always your concepts will prove to be attempts to catch water in a sieve or wrap it up in a parcel. So he invented a method of teaching Buddhism which was an extension of the dialectic method that the Buddha himself first used and this became uh, the great way of studying especially at the University of Nalanda which uh, has been re-established in modern times but of course it was destroyed by the Muslims when they invaded India the University of Nalanda where th the dialectic method of enlightenment was taught the dialectic method is perfectly simple uh, it can be done with an individual student and a teacher or with a group of students and a teacher and you would be amazed how effective it is when it involves precious little more than discussion. Some of you no doubt have attended tea groups, blab labs, in which people are there and they don't know quite why they're there and there's some sort of a so-called resource person to disturb them. <laughs> and after a while they get the most incredible emotions and uh, somebody tries to, to, to dominate the discussion of the group say and uh, then the group kind of goes into the question of why he's trying to dominate it and so on and so forth well these were the original blab labs and they have been repeated in modern times with the most startling effects that is to say the teacher gradually elicits from his participant students what are their basic premises of life? What is your metaphysic? In the sense, I'm not using metaphysic in a kind of a spiritual sense, but what are your basic assumptions? What real ideas do you operate on as to what is right and what is wrong, what is the good life and what is not? What arguments are you going to argue strongest? Where do you take your stand? The teacher soon finds this out for each individual concerned and then he demolishes it. He absolutely takes away that person's compass. And so they start getting very frightened and say to the teacher, all right, I see now, of course, I, I can't depend on this, but what should I depend on? And unfortunately, the teacher doesn't offer any alternative suggestions, but simply goes on to examine the question, why do you think you have to have something to depend on? Now, this is kept up over quite a period, and the only thing that keeps the students from going insane is the presence of a teacher who seems to be perfectly happy, but is not proposing any ideas. He's only demolishing them. So we get finally, not quite finally, to the void, the shunya. And what then? When you get to the void, there is an enormous and unbelievable sense of relief. That's nirvana. Phew, as I gave a proper English translation of nirvana. Ah, great. <laughs> the, 
so they are liberated and yet they can't quite say why or what it is that they found out so they call it the void but Nagarjuna went on to say you mustn't cling to the void you have to void the void and so the void of non-void is the great state as it were of Nagarjuna's Buddhism but you must remember that all that has been voided all that has been denied are those concepts in which one has hitherto attempted to pin down what is real in Zen Buddhist text they say you cannot nail a peg into the sky and so to be a man of the sky a man of the void is also called a man not depending on anything and when you're not hung on anything you are the only thing that isn't hung on anything which is the universe which doesn't hang you see where would it hang it has no no place to fall on even though it may be dropping there will never be the crash of it landing on concrete floor somewhere <laughs> but the reason for that is that it won't crash below because it doesn't hang above and so there is a poem in Chinese which speaks of such a person as having above not a tile to cover the head below not an inch of ground on which to stand and you see this which to people like us who are accustomed to rich imageries of the divine the loving father in heaven who has laid down the eternal laws O word of God incarnate O wisdom from above O truth unchanged unchanging O light of life and love the wisdom which from the hallowed page a lantern for our footsteps shines out from age to age see so that's very nice we feel we know where we are and that it's all been written down and that in heaven the Lord God is resplendent with glory with all the colors of the rainbow with all the saints and angels around and everything like that so we, we feel that it is positive that we've got a real rip-roaring gutsy religion full of color and so on but it, it doesn't work that way